I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the nursing process. So the nursing process is assessment, diagnosis, planning, implementation, and evaluation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down all of those categories for you and give a couple of examples. So let's jump into it. Let's start with assessment. So assessment, first thing we do, and what assessment is, is when we're gathering our data on our patient. So this is subjective information and objective information. And if you remember, subjective information is anything the patient tells you. Objective information is anything that we can observe or anything that we do like a lab test. So some examples of data that we gather could be from x-rays, lab results, our head-to-toe assessment, uh, the interview, and our observation of the patient. So this is our assessment. This is our data that we're gathering. There's two types of assessments. There is a comprehensive and a problem-focused. So comprehensive is exactly what it sounds like. This is every single thing. We're checking every single thing on this patient. Problem-focused is they came here for a specific reason. They're being admitted for a specific reason, a specific problem, their chief complaint, whatever you want to call it, their reason for seeking care, and that's what we're going to focus on. So an example of this could be pain. So they came in because they're having pain. We're going to do our assessment and focus our assessment around that pain. Now, I do want to say, even if you're doing a problem-focused assessment, that doesn't mean you're going to completely ignore everything else. The rest of your assessment is still important too, but we're first going to focus on the presenting problem. So where do we get this data? We have two sources. The patient is number one, and the patient should always be number one. The patient is considered the best source because they know their bodies better than anybody else. There are going to be times when you're taking care of a patient who is very confused, right? And they're probably not the most reliable reporters. They're not going to be the best source in that situation. But usually, patient is number one. Number two is the chart, their medical record, and then others. So their caregivers, their family members, or other people on the healthcare team. The nurse who is leaving the shift before you who took care of that patient for 12 hours, they know that patient better than you do if you've never met them before, right? So these are our two big sources of data. And then some helpful tips when it comes to the assessment portion of the nursing process. Number one is learn as much as you can about that patient. You are the patient expert. You are the expert on your patient. And an example of this is when somebody's coding and it's your patient, Everybody's going to be looking to you because you should know more than the charge nurse, more than the CNA, and even more than the doctor about this patient because you're the one that spends the most time with them. So you are an expert on all of your patients. So learn as much about them as you possibly can. Then, number two, after you've learned all this information, you've gathered all this data, figure out what's the most relevant. Some of it's going to be important and some of it's not going to be very important. So that's part of critical thinking is you figuring out, okay, all this information I have, what's the important stuff? And then the final part of critical thinking is utilizing your own past experience. Now every patient is different, everybody's an individual, but if you've taken care of 50 people with pneumonia before, you're going to kind of know the routine for your new patient with pneumonia. Use your past experience. You're going to know what hiccups could happen, what consequences could happen, or what things could get in the way. So knowing your patient, knowing what's best for them, knowing the most important information about them, and then using your own past experience to provide the best possible care. This portion is the assessment part of the nursing process, and it is probably the most important because if you mess up on this part, you're going to mess up on the rest of it. It's going to affect everything you do. So the assessment, first and most important part of the nursing process. Now that we've done our assessment, we've gathered all of our data, and we've ID'd our relevant information, we are ready to move on to step two of the nursing process, which is diagnosis. In the diagnostic stage, this is when we're identifying the problem. 
Now, one thing I do want to point out is a nursing diagnosis is not a medical diagnosis. They're very different. It is not in our scope of practice to make medical diagnoses. So example, the doctor will diagnose the patient with pneumonia. We will say ineffective airway clearance. And I know you're probably thinking, well, how am I supposed to know that? How am I supposed to know what diagnoses I'm allowed to use in that? It's in your book. You have a whole book on this. This is the NANDA book. It has all of the approved nursing diagnoses that you can use. This book is your friend. Learn how to read it, learn how to use it, and it will be very helpful to you throughout your nursing career in nursing school. So there are three types of nursing diagnoses. There's the problem focused, which is exactly what it sounds like. You're gonna focus on the main problem. Risk diagnoses, which is focusing on potential problems, future problems, like maybe your patient is uh, dizzy and confused, so they are at risk for falls. There's a potential that they could fall. That's a risk diagnosis. And then the third one is the health promotion. And then again, exactly what it sounds like. So promoting health, healthy behaviors. So when you look at your NANDA book and you see all the different potential diagnoses you could use, it could be very overwhelming. There's a lot of choices. So how do you know what to pick? The first thing you're gonna do is look back to your assessment. Look at your assessment, ID the relevant info, and then it's going to kind of narrow down your choices and it's gonna make it a lot easier for you to pick the appropriate diagnosis for your patient. And then the second part is after you've picked it, you're gonna write your diagnostic statement. And there is a proper way to do this. So the template is your diagnosis, which is your problem, related to your RT, which is the etiology or the cause, what caused your problem, and then your as evidenced by, AEB. These are your signs and symptoms. So an example one I've written here about pain. So our nursing diagnosis is acute pain related to surgical incision. So the surgical incision is what caused the pain. So acute pain related to surgical incision as evidenced by, so what's our proof that they're having pain? The patient reported a nine out of 10 pain. And since that was subjective, I put it in quotations. That's a subjective part of our assessment. It has to go in quotes because it's something they said. So this is an example of our diagnostic statement. We have our problem related to the cause of that problem and as evidenced by the proof, our signs and symptoms. All right, so we've done our assessment. We've figured out an appropriate diagnosis. Now it's time to make our plan. So the next step is planning. And in the planning stage, this is when we develop our goals and outcomes for our patient. So what's the difference between a goal and an outcome? A goal is a general statement. It's a very broad statement about what we want to happen. So it describes what we want to happen, what experience do we want the patient to have. An outcome is a lot more specific. An outcome is a measurable change, the little triangle, if you weren't sure, that means change, that's just a little shorthand in nursing, is a measurable change that must be achieved in order to meet the goal. So things you can observe the patient do, that's an outcome. And I've written some examples of these. So for a goal, our example is, the patient will achieve pain relief by discharge. So that's what we want to have them. We want them to have pain relief. Our outcome is a little bit more specific. The patient will report a pain of zero out of 10. When you're writing an outcome statement, make sure you're being smart about it. So SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and relevant, and timely. So specific meaning just do one at a time. You're gonna have a bunch to choose from and you're gonna think of a lot of them. Just pick one at a time. M is for measurable. If you can put a number on it, that's the most ideal situation. So for our example here, I said the patient will report pain of zero out of 10. So using the pain scale, we can quantify this. We can put a number on it. That's measurable. Attainable is the something the patient can do or is willing to do. For example, you're not gonna ask your bed bound patient to go walking in the hallways. It's not realistic. 
right? So making sure it's attainable and then R for realistic. Is it something that they're capable of doing? And on the side of the note, maybe they're capable of it. Maybe they're like physically they can do it, but maybe they're not going to do it. Maybe you know like compliance wise, it's not gonna happen. So be realistic, think of attainable outcomes for your patient, something they're capable of doing and something that they will do. And then the other R is for relevant. Don't make outcomes that have nothing to do with what's going on with your patient. And then finally, T is timely. Put a time frame on it. People are more likely to achieve their goals and outcomes if you put a time frame on it. And that time could be by the end of the shift, within the next eight hours. Or for our example here, by discharge. We want this to happen before discharge. So put a time frame on it, and that's going to help them achieve those outcomes, and it's going to make it easier for you to measure if they were able to achieve those outcomes. Now, some of these are going to be very short term, saying, you know, by the end of the shift, we want them to be able to do whatever. Some of them are going to be long term, especially if you are a community health nurse or you're working, you know, outside of like a hospital setting, maybe you're in case management or something, and you're doing your care plans. Your time frames could be longer. They could be a month, six months, a year, right? If you're dealing with chronic disease. And that's okay. So don't be thinking that you have to have your time like this and we have to have it figured out before we go home today. No, 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 no. Think about the time in relation to what we want them to do. Is it realistic for them to do what we want them to do in that time frame? If not, do we need to change that time frame? And that's okay if we do. So this is planning. This is the third step in the nursing process. All right, now we're on to the fourth step of the nursing process, which is implementation. This is us actually doing the things that we planned. So implementation is the things you will do or we will help the patient to do to achieve our goals and outcomes that we set for them. So some tips in the implementation stage, making sure the things we wanna do are relevant, that they're actually gonna help our patient. And then make sure they're explainable. So if somebody were to ask you, like, why are you doing that? Why are you implementing that? You can explain it, you have a good rationale. And when you write your statement, you're gonna write, for example, our patient with pain, surgical pain, provide PCA as ordered. So that is our implementation, that's our intervention that we've chosen. And then we have to explain why we've chosen that intervention with our rationale. So our rationale for this is the IV route is preferred method of severe acute post-operative pain. And that just didn't come from my brain. That is something I read in my NANDA book. And so of course I'm gonna cite that. So you wanna cite it. You don't wanna take credit for your rationale. You always wanna cite your rationale. And your rationale explains why you chose the intervention you chose in your implementation stage. Now for the final step in the nursing process is the evaluation. And what are we evaluating? We're evaluating us, ourselves. What did we come up with? Our plan, did it work? Was it good? So in the evaluations, we're addressing the goals and making judgments on them. So were they met? That's what we're asking ourselves. That's the big question with evaluation. Were our goals met? If yes, then that's great. We can discontinue the care plan because we don't need it anymore. Our goals are met. If no, the first thing you want to figure out is why. Why were our goals not met? Were they not smart outcomes? Were they not realistic? Were they not specific, measurable, timely? Or did something happen? Your patient was doing great. They were getting up, they were moving around, and they slipped and fell in the hall and broke their hip. Now they've had a change in condition. If there's a change in condition, that's obviously going to change everything. That's going to change your whole care plan. And that's okay. That makes sense. Do not think that you did something wrong or that you failed or that you're a bad nurse or anything like that if your patients don't always yes, if they don't always get a yes, we met our goals. It's okay if they don't meet their goals. So figure out why. And then once we figure out why, change something. So where was the error? Where did we go wrong? Was it in the beginning, in the assessment? Did we not gather the relevant info? Did we gather information that wasn't important? Did we pick the inappropriate diagnoses? Was our diagnosis good, but our plan related to our diagnoses wasn't good? 
Or what about our interventions? They weren't good interventions. They weren't smart interventions. So figure out what went wrong. Or if it was because of a change in condition, discontinue the whole care plan because maybe it's not relevant anymore. It doesn't make sense for your patient in the way that they are right now. And make a new one. And that's okay. We can do that. I don't want you to think like, oh, I have to always get a yes. Okay, if your goal wasn't met, that's okay. You just need to explain why it wasn't met. So let's do an example of an evaluation, continuing on with our patient who was having pain. Remember our goal that they would achieve pain relief prior to discharge? We're gonna say that they met that goal. So here I have goal met. The patient was able to achieve adequate pain control prior to discharge. The patient reported a zero out of 10 pain at discharge. So that's the nursing process, assessment, diagnosis, planning, implementation, and evaluation. Each step is really important and they all kind of build on each other. So if you mess up one, it kind of is like a domino effect and it messes up everything. So be very diligent and very careful when you're making your care plans and going through the nursing process when taking care of your patients. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, just let me know. If not, I'll see you on the next one.